All right. So, welcome, Samuel. Hey, great to be here, Jason. <laughs> awesome. So, I uh, invited you here because I really wanted to find out from you. You have a very unique, um, colorful life and wanted to find out for everyone how that really comes out, especially the passion side of you uh, and how that passion became something that you really enjoy doing and you are actually doing now. So Samuel runs an outfit that does debate for schools and he goes there teaching them and helping them to understand how debate works and yeah, basically just teaching them, right? That's Am I right. right? Yeah. Anything else? Um, uh, in addition to debate, I'll be teaching them things which are related to debate, mm. um, oratory, public speaking, model United Nations. So it's got debate elements as well. So all these um, sort of things which are com put into the debate program. So it's not just two teams yelling at each other. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, one thing I'm very fascinated about is, uh, and this is about your life story. I, I know you since JC. Right, and uh, that point of time you were valedictorian, right? So then after I know that you became a scholar, you went to this is Mr. Harvard here. You went to Harvard, then you became the assistant director in Ministry of Law. Um, I went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs first. Foreign Affairs first. Diplomat, yeah. And then my last posting uh, as a civil servant was at the Ministry of Law, yeah, mm -hmm. doing uh, intellectual property oh. uh, policy, yeah. So for somebody like that, my mm. curiosity is peaked because most of the time when I see that, I see a future that's great, a future that's stable, a future that you kind of know your path and you kind of like will carry on if you don't piss anybody off, <laughs> right? But you chose another path mm -hmm. and you chose the path to say that, okay, you chose debate compared to, hey, carry on that job that is actually not bad in most Singaporean contexts. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I am curious about is if I were to try to analyze being a, doing a business or doing debate um, doesn't have that stability mm. that a uh, government job will have and, and that can be challenging. So if you were to just share with me what made you have that decision or were you doing both first or what happened? How do you come and decide to say that this is going to be for me, not that? Um, interesting that you use the term like this is a career which could be great because that greatness is somewhat a conditioning of our culture, our society that tells us, well, these are the sort of things you should aspire to, yes. especially in Singapore, right? Working for the government, um, following the footsteps of uh, great civil servants that we've had before as well. It's something that we should aspire to. There's a lot of prestige associated with PSE and the scholarships that are given out as well. Yeah. Not true for some other countries where, mm -hmm. you know, being a civil service is like, oh, you couldn't get any other job, that kind yeah. of stuff. So it's different for Singapore. Correct, yeah. yeah. But it is here. And I guess all of us were affected by that. And that's why we wanted to push for these sort of accolades and scholarships. I mean, to be blunt, Harvard is quite wealthy. I mean, they have like yeah. billions of dollars in endowment. And they did say, you know, if you want to come and you don't have money, we'll just pay for you. Mm. Yeah, so uh, no undergraduate will go to Harvard in need. So I didn't have to take the PSE scholarship and I didn't have to take the bond. And some of my friends were saying, you're quite stupid to take the bond. <laughs> in that case, like, why bind yourself yeah. you know, to a decision? And at that point, our, our conditioning is strong. Yes. You know, and the narrative is that you should take this, uh, bring glory to the family, the clan, the school, all this kind of stuff. And so you take it. Yeah. And at that point in time, I really did want to become a diplomat. Okay. Um, I was excited by the idea of uh, going to other countries, meeting people from other cultures, because that's what I did. I'm, I'm, mm. a, a, I'm an immigrant, you know, came to Singapore when yep. I was 10. So I thought I would be a good fit for that. And to a large extent, I was. Then some pull and push factors started to come in. One, I don't think we ever know what the full extent of our jobs will be like. Never. Yep. And there were some interesting things about the diplomatic service, if I can share here, that one might not have considered. Uh, what do you think when you hear diplomat? What do you do? Attend dinners, um, negotiate things before things get out of hand. All the fancy attractive stuff, right? Tuxedos. Oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That kind that. of stuff. Yeah, so attend dinners and all that. Um, Special but, line. Correct, yeah. And they're there, they're there, they're there. <laughs> and, you know, and MFA was great in yeah. giving you the training for it. I mean, they were teaching us how to wear suits properly, like, you know, color coordinate, mm. that kind of stuff. And they'll give you language training to the postings that you're going to. So a lot of preparation is given. Right. But there's some aspects of the job which are something you can't avoid. You are going to have to spend 
three years abroad for your posting. Yeah. Then you come back for three years. Where do you go? Um, so I was in New Delhi, okay. uh, in India, at the Singapore High Commission. Right. But because you're doing that three years abroad, yeah. three years back, three years abroad, I mean, as a bachelor, yeah. that's okay. Mm. But what happens once you settle down? Tough. Because yeah. your spouse is going to have to come along. Yes. Have to put their career on hiatus because yeah. it's really hard to get a job like telling everyone in that new country that, oh, I'm a diplomatic spouse. And they're like, oh, you're going to run away at some point, yeah. man. And what do you do when you have kids? Yeah. Right? Because um, trying to raise a child in two different education systems is, can be brutal. And True. I, I, I've seen how that transformation can take a lot to adjust to. So those began you know, um, popping up as some thoughts as, is this the path that I want to stay in? Mm. And probably not for me at that point. Okay. Then the pull factor came from the fact that I think like all AC alum, <laughs> we're all um, deeply connected, yes. uh, either in spirit or in my case, just a little bit more because I think that our um, co-curricular activities like drama, choir and debate mm -hmm. have a healthy tradition of bringing back alumni, keeping that tradition strong so that we can act as advisors, as yeah. coaches. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. And I was doing that for debate, mm. even when I was in the civil service. So with another ex-debater who was at the Ministry of Finance and I was at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm. we actually managed to do full-time coaching between the two of us. But it was so hard, you know, with the time constraints and um, the kids were having to stay back so late to yep. accommodate our schedules as well. So we could only do it for one year. Right. But by then, my appetite was already whetted. And I enjoy this. Mm. I um, It's going to be a pay cut for sure. Yeah. But when the bond was about to end, and that's... This bond is what? The PSC scholarship? Uh, the PSC bond? scholarship, so yeah. Six it's a six-year bond. Okay. And uh, you get a 10 months discount. Um, because you serve national service. Okay. And so, and as my, the countdown to the end of the bond was coming, mm. then I had to start to think, if I want to try something new, now's yeah. the time. Right. Because if you stay anywhere, regardless of whether that's, uh, you know, that, that place is suitable for you or not, mm. it gets harder to leave. The inertia is strong. Sometimes your pay is just too good to yes. leave at that yeah. point. You might not have that... Uh, physical energy or the uh, the mental alertness to be able to adjust to the new job as well. So I thought, okay, I am uh, I'm a free man at the age of well, 32. <laughs> right. So let's just uh, fling myself into the unknown and then just try to do this full time. And okay. it's worked out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So one thing I'm very curious whenever I talk to uh, about people mm. to people about careers, um, it is if we talk about following your passion. Passion actually breaks. I define passion in three different things, mm. right? So one of them is interest. That means topics that you can just talk about for mm -hmm. hours and hours, right? The other one is strengths. Mm -hmm. Tasks that you do that f feels natural. Right. It comes naturally to you. It's like almost when you pick up the tools, it's very light. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is very heavy. And the last one is values. So values is, am I aligned to this as my priority in life? Is mm. this my tenet in life? So I wanted to find out from you for debate, from a scale of 0 to 10, mm -hmm. 10 being you feel very energized, right. you look forward to it, the topic excites you, interest level, mm -hmm. right? 0 means that you drained, you feel drained. <laughs> what is the number? Oh, wow. It's at a 9. Okay. Yeah. So, deeply passionate about the activity. Yep. Um, I was a debater, right? I was just to <laughs> make this it This is less. in so, JC? Um, this is in both secondary school and JC. Okay. Uh, it was not a big deal in secondary school. Right. I don't think ACS really felt the need to devote that, mind, um, you know, that much resources to uh, debating. Because okay. they're like, you're ACS boys, you can, yeah. you can speak. Um, we were national champions in our sec four year, by the way. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Right, okay. Without really trying that hard. Yeah? <laughs> so, that was the thing. But... Um, but once um, it was, I was in JC, yeah. and I was still doing track and field once yeah. upon a time when mm. I was much you know, fitter and faster. Yeah, mm. Those were the days. But um, the coach at that time, and she was also our head of department for the mm -hmm. arts and literature, she essentially said that if we're going to do debate, this is going to be a lot more serious, mm -hmm. and I'm going to push you to the, like, to the pinnacle of this particular activity. You will need to give yourself a little bit of time. Make right. sure you can handle it, right? right? And she didn't discourage me from doing other stuff. In fact, she encouraged me and said, oh, fitness is good for you. Go and run and track and field. So carry on for track and field. Yeah, exactly. But okay. I was living in Tampines and mm. going from Tampines to Buena Vista Buena every Vista. day. Plus I was uh, taking um, third language French in Bishan at that time. It just became a little bit too difficult for me to handle. Yeah. So I did have to drop track and field. But then 
um, we went all the way with debate. I was in the national team for mm-hmm. debate, and there is a world championship for that as well. And so that's where I got that depth in this mm. activity, which gave me both the credentials as well as the um, desire right. to carry on with this activity. That's why it's a nine, because I can see how some individuals yeah. through this activity can completely change your your mindset, mm. your perspective of the world, yeah. right? And I think that I have a, a little bit of an edge over the others because I have seen how the way that you view the world and the perspectives that you're locked into can change because right. Myanmar was very different from Singapore. Yeah. I mean, they sometimes say that Singapore doesn't have a lot of like information, you know, freely provided. A lot of stuff is hidden. Mm. I mean, that was a military dictatorship that I escaped from. So yeah. it's a completely different thing. And I saw my eyes being opened when mm. I upon arriving in Singapore. And but when I then did debate, then I was really starting to view things from completely different actors' perspectives, mm. trying to appreciate um, the value of different philosophies, different thoughts, as yeah. well as the lives lived by people around the world. And that was just something that I truly felt Singaporean kids mm. would benefit from. Right. And that's why I wanted to go into debate. And every time something just clicks mm. you know, with the kids and they just go, oh yeah, I never saw it that way. Mm. That's true. I guess if I, if I were someone from a minority race, yeah. I wouldn't be feeling this privilege. Mm. And those are the magic moments that I'm always looking for. Those are the highs I get. Right. So if I were to try to mm. pinpoint all the way back to your youngest memory or earliest memory mm-hmm. of thinking about debate, when mm-hmm. would that be? So that was, and um, truly thinking about the activity. So I did it just as an activity in secondary school. Like All the teachers tell me, I just show up, deliver a speech, yeah. and it's just a fun thing for me to do. Mm. And I think that when I was debating for the national team, right, and I was going up against um, <laughs> the Americans, mm. right, um, good speakers, but we really see the world in different ways. Right. And I realized that when we were having a debate about <laughs> democracy mm. and they were just, you know, um, lavishing praise on the system. Right. right. Oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread, blah, blah, mm. blah. And I realized, oh, hang on. They're not, they're not saying this because that's their side and they were assigned, you know, the pro-democracy side as yep. it were. This is a genuine belief system. They were so lucky to have gotten that side in that debate. Yeah. <laughs> but imagine them on the other side. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. America is terrible. Our, yeah. our system of government doesn't yeah. work. Democracy is bad. Yeah. And, but whereas in Singapore, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had schools that I have debated would yeah. have t- taken that pre- pro-democracy side. But yeah. you can always tell that's a side that they have intellectually wedded themselves to. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. And here we are on the Singapore side and mm. going, no, you've got to be careful with democracy. It doesn't always work. Um, you mm. need a whole bunch of institutions to be built up in order before you can get it to work properly. You need literacy, you need safety, all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the Americans were looking at us like we were just like speaking Greek to them. You know? right. <laughs> they were like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> right? And it, it, it was like a genuine event, right? Where like oh, 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 we really had a clash of cultures. Right. And that's when I realized that debate offered this opportunity and that mm. I really should have looked back on all of the debates in the past and really yeah. throw myself mm. trying to put on the boots of an American and say mm. that, yeah, this is the best system since sliced bread. And that probably make you grow the most right. and forces you to see things from the other perspective a lot more. Yeah. Right. So very grateful for that match. Yeah. So what I'm hearing sometimes mm. that you're sharing is that there is there's a kind of overlap mm-hmm. um, that there debate helps you to open up your mind to see yep. different facets mm-hmm. and to hold opposing views mm-hmm. together, still respecting both views. Yep. So that's one side. Mm-hmm. The other side is that when you went to work, you mm-hmm. went for uh, foreign affairs yes. and you wanted to be a diplomat yeah. which the whole idea of each country having their own core belief systems mm-hmm. and you trying to match it yep. while respecting each other mm. and is there any correlation uh, in the broader theme of your life to say that there's something about respecting each other's points of views mm-hmm. that I want to be able to just go all the way in I think that a lot of the lessons that I picked up as a diplomat really cross apply to debate. I'm really grateful for the training right. that I received. Or maybe it's the other way. What? Maybe, who knows? Yeah, right? Your yeah. debate so, helped yeah, you with the diplomat. That intersectionality, yeah. as it yeah. were. Um, the 
surprising thing about diplomats, which a lot of people will not know because we, they always assume you are the conciliatory you know, uh, individual because oh, we've, we've got the armed forces to be the yeah. stick. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. You're the carrot. Yeah. You go and play nice. Mm. Diplomats are supposed to be tough mm. because we're a small country. Yeah. Um, our diplomatic service is also similarly small. Mm. And for small countries to be noticed in the big world, it's not easy. Yeah. And it's a um, little bit of a shock when you greet other diplomats at a f- function, etc., mm-hmm. and you say, I'm from Singapore, and they look a bit stunned because some of them did not really think that, one, we would have an embassy <laughs> there. Some of them appear to be looking at me like, are you a real country? <laughs> that sort of stuff. Yeah. And when I realized that certain ministries yeah. wouldn't even give us the time of day mm. because, oh, you're not the British, you're not the Americans, yeah. why should we talk to you? Mm. And, you know, growing up in Singapore, we kind of maybe thought that, you know, we are should be the other way, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're, we're, like we're, we're, we're a success story. Gem you know? of Asia. Yeah, third, third world to first and all that kind <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Yeah. And then when you realize, no one cares about you, man. <laughs> right? Humility, man. Yeah. Gives us humility. But then our diplomats, therefore, have to be a little bit more aggro yeah. at so times. You, you very vocal. To, hmm. Yeah, you need to be a bit more vocal, need to be a larger presence right. uh, so that you can push mm-hmm. Singapore. Ah. And and the values that we have and the and principles values. that we have yeah. and and you should fight for them yeah and I think that's why I learned which cross applies to debate if you believe that your position is worthwhile yeah you've got to speak up for it and you shouldn't just like be absent at the meetings mm. not voting on them yeah um, and you know if that's the case you stand to lose out the most in the long run mm. I'm sure some people were a bit puzzled by our very overt um, support for Ukraine in the current conflict mm-hmm. against Russia, because I think our ministry has come out very strongly mm-hmm. in favor in the UN and all that as well. But I think yep. it's because um, there's a belief that you know, smaller nations need to stand together yep. right, and yep. have the solidarity as well. And we will be vocal about it. We won't right. hide, yes. you know, trying to play both sides as well. Yeah. Right. So that's great. Yeah. But at the same time, the other thing um, that MFA and the diplo- uh, diplomatic call would have taught me is that different people react to messages differently yep. and trying to get through to them, being persuasive using different techniques should be something that I learn. Mm. Yeah. Because you got to figure out what matters to you. Yeah. Right. And it could be a completely different thing compared to what matters to Singapore and Singaporeans. Yeah. And taking that and trying to teach it to my kids is very, very difficult at times mm-hmm. because frankly, um, a lot of our students are very privileged in not having to worry about how life would have been different, yeah. right? How life can be better, etc. Because yeah. um, we already have the luxury of a great education system, yeah. etc. Second, I don't think they have the bandwidth. Yeah. I mean, how was it like in How was it like in school for us? Wasn't it like yeah. you know, like Busy. just Busy. clear the next exam? Yeah. yeah, just clear the next exam. I, our time horizon would yeah. have been like if you're in secondary school. Were, were we even thinking of JC? Not, not, not really. Even. I mean, just a, it's a, yeah. it's a no, normal mm. progression uh, yeah. until what really hits you then mm. is university yeah. and what course. Uh, but coming back, the, mm. the idea of muscles hierarchy, yeah. we don't really bother that much. A lot of us mm. don't, uh, fortunate enough not to bother. And that's mm-hmm. why maybe, um, yeah, the things that we talk about might not be something that it's something that comes from, it might come from an intellectual pursuit, mm. but more, not more, not from an experience pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. So coming back when when I'm curious because mm-hmm. is there a theme that you see mm-hmm. when it comes to even this job, uh, your previous job, mm-hmm. and maybe even your next job because we don't know right. what we're gonna do, yeah. right? Is there something about is there a theme, is there a red thread that goes on that something about opposing views and mm-hmm. being that mediator or being that stage where people can voice out respectfully? Do you see that theme in your life? Yeah, I mean, that theme is definitely there um, because I'm also someone who is passing instructions on to these individuals and trying to pass on a skill set. Now, this is something that our teachers will be trying to do a lot. Mm. They are trying to teach us skills. Unfortunately, sometimes I think the way our, our educational system is stacked, which they're changing, thankfully, tends to be a lot of like passing on information right. rather than just the skills yep. as well. So I get to work a little bit more on skills. Mm. And I mean, to be blunt, it's not something everyone can do. Mm. Some people can code switch just a little bit better mm-hmm. and easier. And I thought that, well, this is not a skill set that I would enjoy. Or, 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 or take it back. This is not something 
that I I have something which is unique. Mm. Surely other people can do that as well. Mm. And that wasn't the case because I'm having to code switch, for instance, talking to teachers yeah. um, to try to negotiate. Then I'm sort of like their peer as well as being a vendor for them, yeah. very professional. Yeah. Mm. Then when I talk to the parents of the kids, different. then I had to take a very different tone. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the governor. I'm trying to help your kids out, advisor. Mm. But with the children, now you have to play different roles as well. Yeah. With some of them, you have to be the disciplinarian. You, know, yeah. you have to almost like be the teacher because sometimes mm. the teachers... Um, have too much on their hands to be able to play a much stronger role with these uh, with these kids, and yep. so I have to be very stern with them. But then with the others, the the way to bring out the best to them of them from them is to be their friend. Mm. Yeah, it's not easy for a forty year old to hang out with sixteen year olds, man. <laughs> right? True, true, true. Okay. But that's Carrying the a skateboard is <laughs> hello, fellow kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's mm. the. I mean, when it comes to human beings uh, yeah. and the best salespeople mm. uh, believe that different folks different strokes. Yeah, they believe that, and that's why everybody's button is different. Mm. You you will never sell a car um, to a person who's whose main main hotspot would mm-hmm. be family and right. tell him, and tell him that hey this is a really cool car mm-hmm. it's a fast car and all that well on the other side you will never sell a single who really wants just flashiness the comforts and the safety of a car right. so good car salesmen know that mm-hmm. uh, good salesmen know that and the idea of different folks different strokes is is something that even for leaders mm-hmm. to be a good leader you need to know that different people have different wants yeah and in life and in their career so, hmm. so when when this theme happens for you, how do you know that? How do you know that we come back to the next hmm. one? So, first one is interest. That means yep. you are you are interested in mm-hmm. debate, right? The whole concept of debate, the whole idea of it. Mm-hmm. The second one is talent hmm. or strengths. Right. How do you know that you were good at it? Hmm. Who told you? Th- was it uh, something like okay? I kind of like went up there and everybody came down clap and then they were clapping and says, "Oh yeah, I didn't know that." Mm-hmm. Because most of the time, what I see in individuals is that strengths is something that they just thought everybody else had. Right. Yeah. It's like mm. can't you code switch? Mm. Can't you talk yep. in a very specific way mm-hmm. in in a in a way that's expressive but yet uh, riveting at the same time? Mm-hmm. So how did you find out that was your strength? Um two different validation paths. I think one, I was acutely aware of the fact that I am from a different country and I also jumped yet another world because going from a neighborhood primary school Mm -hmm. to ACSI, very different environment and you're speaking different languages. And then, dude, remember army? People are speaking once again in a very different way. Can you you imagine like giving mission briefings as an officer Mm. in posh received pronunciation? (laughs) (laughs) Gentlemen, we shall attack the hill today. Fail. Yeah, fail. Fail big time. And you have to code switch and you You become a little bit more Hokkien Bing. A bit more Hokkien Bing, yes. Or just a bit more. Mm. Yeah, so even, yeah. So what I Mm. see is that um, sometimes when officers are like Mm -hmm. that, the men distance themselves. Yeah. And especially when I see officers who are... Mm just come across too intellectual. Yeah. Uh, I do see sometimes men, mm-hmm. um, they, they, it's, it's a barrier. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a barrier that, hey, you're not from my tribe. Yeah. So, so for officers to be good, um, which I wasn't really mm-hmm. last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. Or for leaders to be mm-hmm. good is really to respect the, respect the tribe mm-hmm. that you're trying to speak into and then try to uh, speak their language. Yeah. And so at least I appreciated that I have experience mm. speaking, you know, different languages. Yeah, and MFA essentially formalizes that and say that oh, you do have to learn to talk to different people yep. when you're speaking to the media. You have to take a different tone. Yep. You're talking to people from the US, etc. Depending on what your respect, uh, respective positions mm. are, both formal as well as you know on, on the job training yep. that you get from your seniors and your supervisors as well. Mm-hmm. The external validation came. So from the, wait, the yeah. internal validation mm. came from. Well, you know, just me growing and reflecting and and realizing that I am often chosen, right, to be right doing all of this, and that um, there must be a reason why that's happening. But at the same time, I am able to code switch, and then yeah. I am actually able to get along with as many people as possible. Mm. Probably a survival mechanism. Yeah. Right. Because if you arrived in Singapore and I didn't pick up some of those little singlish terms fast, mm. I think physically I can pass off as someone who was born here, etc. Yep. But 
the moment you start speaking, mm. especially when primary schools can be primary schools can be rather uh, tough battlegrounds, right? Pretty if tough, you yeah. if you don't belong, yeah. right? And so I think that 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 need to belong and the need to be able to just fit in where I went, right. which is a big factor when we were young, yeah. meant that I knew I was actively doing that. So that's right. why I was already aware that this is something that I can do. Yeah. Right. Then, so you were mm. so you the enlightenment came from yourself yeah. knowing that mm. this was a talent this was a strength that I had and mm-hmm. I saw that it worked because the people kind of resonated with me yes okay okay yeah. so that's the internal mm-hmm. validation correct yeah external? And, you know I, I think the external started to merge with that you start to notice that every time there's a presentation or yep. something then others are like oh you know Sam you do <laughs> you're, you're the talker so you right? okay. yeah. so you are the project work like correct. okay spokesperson yeah. go for it. Right, and I think you at, are the, the talker. I mean, at, at the time, yeah, you're the talker. <laughs> so like, you, know, you won't shut up. You're yeah, just, yeah. yeah, might as well do it. Yeah. But after all, I realized that, um, you know, at first I thought well, you can do this as well, can't yeah, you? Yeah. And but turns out for them, it was it's really difficult. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a real phobia. It's right? energy and sapping. It's, it's it's really out of the comfort zone. It is. It is. And I, I mean. I think this is something that I read. It could be a joke. I need to verify. Let's <laughs> do the fact checking, which was that the American Psychological Association yeah. did a survey of like, what are your biggest fears? Mm. Number two is death. Pu- Number one is public, one speaking, is public yeah. speaking. You'd rather that. be dead yeah. in the grave than yeah. to be the one delivering the eulogy, <laughs> yeah. right? So yeah. Yeah. that's when I realized this is not for everyone. <laughs> yes. It's not rational. I mean, like nobody's going to like yeah. jump out and attack you as yeah. you speak. But I mean, fear is not supposed to be rational in this yeah. case. That's when I realized, okay, I I have an edge here. You have right, yeah. And um, there are, and this makes up for a lot of other deficiencies, like my face, <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> so yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> hands, handsome people like you, oh intimidating me, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that then became more validated as a skill set yeah. because the fact that I was able to speak, yeah. that doesn't make you a good coach, not at all. You no. can perform the task well, Play and coach but whether different. you can impart those skills yeah. is another set of validation I needed. Yeah. And thankfully, the structure that was provided uh, for me by ACJC, because yeah. they said you were, you're always welcome as an alumni mm. to come back and help. And that's low pressure coaching. Yes, yes. Because, you know, uh, they say, oh, don't take the competition team. Just take the the, 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 the new ones, you know, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, 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 little, the little ones who, who need a little bit of handholding mm. and let someone else uh, coach the main team where there's right. a little bit more pressure. Yeah. So you get to grow in it. Yeah. And in a way, one of the toughest things for people to want to jump out mm-hmm. um, into the um, into the passion world is because you're just going from you know, one area to a completely different yep. universe. Zero competency. And you're going to have to start from scratch. Yep. So in a way, it's not true that I jumped from the civil service to my new world with zero preparation. True. There's already been a lot of groundwork that was done and I got yep. to take my time to grow mm. in that particular skill set. And then eventually I started to um, take money, right, to do this and because you need to professionalize it. Yeah. And then at that point, I felt that, okay, I've got enough um, credentials, yeah. right, to uh, to to start. Um, the other school that I'm coaching now um, was willing to take a shot at me. Mm. I right? just, just came out of uh, the civil service, yeah. but my uh, debating credentials, et cetera, was an, uh, it was enough for me for them okay. to take a shot at it. And I'm very grateful. I'm still with them, right? And even took a pay cut when COVID and all that came because yeah. I liked working with teachers that share my values, yes. right? This is what they want to do yeah. for their kids, really yeah. get them to grow and get these skills as well. So it's been a very, very happy set of coincidences. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So every time that... I think same thing in mm. um, uh, business also. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good business person would have failed many times because yeah. the competency of business is not mm-hmm. there. So same thing, anytime we go into somewhere new, we always want to have that beginner mindset to train and it's yeah. fortunate that you had that space mm-hmm. as an alumni coming back yeah. to hone those skills. Yeah. How, how did you do it, by the way? Because you were a consultant, right? And then yep. that's, again, some a place that most people assume you'll stay forever. So how did you make the transition? So I did 32 different jobs in my life. <laughs> oh, you counted, did yeah, you? I, right. I counted 32 right. different jobs and businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, professional will writer mm-hmm. before, financial advisor, right. investments. Mm-hmm. I did... Uh, um, Street Culture Magazines. Mm-hmm. I was with Mark uh, on oh, the right, streets yeah. of mm-hmm. Orchard Road busking, <laughs> writing our <laughs> right. own songs. So uh, there was a journey for me mm-hmm. and um, this journey is what I really want to be able to share. The idea that there's always the experimental phase mm. until you find that cross between 
all these three things, passion, which is actually the interest that you have, right. the the strengths that you have, mm -hmm. you have a natural talent for it. Right. And then lastly is the values. It's like, what do you value most? And does does it, does the job that you do bring out that value? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, it's, it's a huge experiment of my life. Mm -hmm. And so now being a coach consultant, uh, it's, it's, it's everything. I love doing dramas in church last time. Oh, so I was, right. I was a creative <laughs> okay. di director right. of my church. Mm -hmm. And the ability to stand up in front of stage to do a drama, mm -hmm. it's a performance. Uh, and yep. sometimes in the workshops I do, mm -hmm. it is a performance. Yep. It is the hand gestures. It is the quarter pause that you do that just help them learn. Mm. Compared to just being a monotonous professor yep. who, who has everything up here but doesn't know how to deliver. It's mm. just across. So, so I just found naturally that my drama, my love for drama, my, dra my love for lyrics, mm. where some words just are more emotive. Yeah. Some words are not, like, like money and finance. <laughs> yeah. Right? And everything crossed together and my deep geeking out and interest for personal development. Mm. So a long time ago, when I was younger, it's always the, you know, this newspaper, everything's like, oh, uh, you this, do this to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> go, go for this course, yeah, go for yeah. this course. I attended almost every single course there just to try to figure mm. out. And I realized there's so many different ways that people said that to be successful. But mm -hmm. when I tried it out, I realized that uh, it has, you need to look within mm. to see what, there, there's already a fire inside mm. and you just need to fan it. Right. If you know that fire, for example, for you, mm. there's something about cost cultural, there's something about uh, people who have differing views, mm -hmm. being able to talk about it. Yep. In your work last time as a diplomat and in your work as a debate, mm -hmm. That, that, that fires you up and mm -hmm. you don't know where it comes from sometimes. Yeah. It, but, but if you fan it, mm -hmm. there's productivity. Yep. Yeah. So that, that's for me, I mean, colorful life. Yeah, they are, 32. I mean, sometimes I do think about, you know, that path not taken. There I'm are. Very, yeah. There and I'm are. very fortunate because things worked out. I mean, <laughs> I have to be very honest, mm -hmm. things worked out yeah. really well, yeah. right? Because path not taken includes, I didn't move out of Myanmar. I could be in like yes. a jail in Myanmar right now. You could right still now, be there, yeah. Right, because I fell foul of the law, because right. laws are changing all the time and trying to make a quick buck there because I did have classmates from there who went to jail. Right, right. Um, some of them because they got too political and all mm. that. And, you know, apparently I can't shut my mouth. So who knows? <laughs> um, the path taken could include, yeah. I never took certain tests and I didn't end up in a school, yeah. right, that is a little bit more vocal and that's a little yeah. bit more... Um, uh, pressurizing in terms of you have to learn to speak differently yes. and then yeah. find that skill set. It's like yeah. uh, the show Sliding Doors. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like so Grandma Paltrow, just whether she went to the train or didn't go correct, to the train, yeah. totally different lives. So I didn't get the chance to do 32 different yeah. jobs. I'm a little bit like envious yeah. of that <laughs> right? because who knows, there might have been something else. Could right? have been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, my wife tells me, you could have been a great clown. Yeah, I don't know whether that meant well. <laughs> I did. I did clown before. I did yeah. balloon artist. Yeah, I heard yeah. it pays well. Does it? Hundred. Uh, I think hundred and fifty per hour. I should be a clown. Yeah. Yeah, why <laughs> yeah. am I doing this? But you only have one hour. Yeah, I know. so depends. <laughs> so, so last yeah. thing in terms of passion, mm. um, there are two that we covered. Yeah. Uh, there's interest things mm -hmm. that topics you can talk about uh, for like extended periods of time yep. and still have that fire. Mm -hmm. There's strengths. Yep. And then last one is values. Mm. So values is something that some sometimes. Uh, it's it's a sensing that people have. Sometimes mm -hmm. people don't write it down. Yep. My value is adventure. And that's uh -huh. why I value adventure means that I will try to go to roles and jobs mm. that just have that adventure. Mm -hmm. So being a business owner is definitely an adventure. Ah, okay. Because you fall down the cliff all the time, get wounded, you come back up and then you try again. Right. Right. I would never, in my my value of adventure, mm -hmm. would never go into, for example, government. Mm. Because I, I would just question too many things and I want to break things. So for you, mm. when it comes to this role that you're playing, mm -hmm. what value do you feel that you are prioritizing or you're living out? Mm. What, what would that be? To sum it up in one word, it's responsibility, but not in the same way. Wow, big that word, you man. Might think. It's big word, right? <laughs> it's yeah, like a it's big just, word. Yeah, like Spider-Man, man. Like <laughs> SAF core value right there, right? And so, but, um, but I view it in a slightly different way. It's not like just being disciplined or like, or you, you're accountable, but that I think those who can will generally and should generally take on just a little bit more of that burden. Right. Yeah. Um, there are people who can lead 
and there are people who follow best different rules right yeah and we should do our best to hone that particular craft that we have and do more because your contributions are great yeah right and i believe that a lot of the students that I'm working with, yeah. they're smart, they're clever, yeah. you know, and sometimes they know things that you have absolutely no hope of like doing. And some of them are actually quite um, brilliant in areas that I would have no hope in. Like for instance, I really am terrible if I'm going to be picking stocks to invest mm. in and all that. Yeah. Not my thing. Yeah. I leave that to my wife. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but some of these kids have been investing, like mm. you know, shadow investing. Like yeah, they, yeah. they make their parents um, pick the stocks and then they do it in their names since twelve. Wow. Right. And one of my students, like, like he picked Amazon at twelve. Mm. Yeah. He can retire now. Yeah, He's man. eighteen. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. But I, 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 I probably would have picked like you know a company like Blockbuster. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so not like, Netflix, everybody so. watches videos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's Blo- what I would have done. Go that. Go that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, um, and but if these guys and girls, yeah. right, all of them are going to become the leaders in the future. Yeah. Which, given the profiles, the schools that they go to, mm-hmm. and even if they're not leaders at the national stage, they're going to be leaders in their communities. Yeah. They're going to be leaders um, in their companies. Yeah. And I felt you need to know how to empathize with other people. You yeah. need to look at things from your employees and your citizens' perspective, and you need to be able to reach out to them and convince them mm-hmm. that the things that you want to do for them are worthwhile. Right. That it will be a sacrifice, but we have to do this. Right. If you don't learn how to do this, you will not make good advocates, communicators, leaders in the future. Right. And I want them to hit that potential. Yeah. So that's the value that I really hold strong to. So responsibility, yeah. it's almost like mm. the, um, the idea that mm-hmm. the the parable of uh, talents, mm-hmm. right? You're given five, you need to multiply five. You're yeah. given one, you need to multiply mm. one. But it's it's not the number that you're given, it's the multiplication that's more important. Yep. Because you've been given something. Mm-hmm. So for you, the you feel that debate brings out mm-hmm. that talent in people, that brings out that voice in people. And that's why it aligns to that responsibility. That responsibility, is it for you, you feel that there's a responsibility that you have personally mm-hmm. or is it more for the students that you feel that you you are in a level where you have responsibility and I want to bring it up? Both. Both. Yeah, as well. Because I feel it's my job yeah. to make you realize that this is their job. Yeah, make them realize that this right. is their job in the future. That. Right. You shouldn't be looking at an extracurricular just as to get more points to get into the you know a slightly better college. But that's college. all we, we all thought about. Oh my god, that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is where I really felt. Can we see this in a slightly different way? Like right. this is what extracurriculars were meant for. Yeah. Right. In a way to and build up these life. values yeah. and to find different perspectives. Yeah. Um, but in this case, you will be the movers and shakers. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, a lot of our students don't see themselves as elite, even if they are. Right. Because I said, you will, because they, they, they're always told, look up, look at how many people are ahead of you. You need mm. to keep chasing them. I say, guys, yeah. you are like, you're near the summit of Mount Everest right. and you're not looking down at how much you've overcome and how many people yeah. are looking up to you, yeah. right? As leaders, you're always thinking, there's a better school, there's yeah. a better student. And I yeah. think you're already at the top. Right. right. In many ways, you are elite, and these are the sort of students that I tend to work with. Yeah. Self selection coming into debate. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I have to tell them: have confidence, but at the same time, do this for the following reasons, yeah. rather than to just win another trophy. True. Yeah. As well. I mean, if I can share an anecdote, um, one of the schools that I coach. This was unusual because I just happened to have a window, mm-hmm. and. My teacher from primary school came and said, "Would you be okay coaching my school?" Primary school. I'm a prim, prim, uh, No, uh, she, she was my teacher back in my primary school. Okay, okay. But now she is a secondary school principal, and uh, she's a principal of a madrasa. Mm. Completely different environment, right? right? And at first, I was, I was like, I know that you guys had debate programs, but I didn't yeah. know you were interested. And when I was talking, and it's a all girls madrasa. Mm. Which wasn't I never heard before. Is. Yeah, so okay. very different culture and background. But then when I was talking to the girls, yeah. they um, also had very different perspectives. Yeah. Like for instance, I just asked them like, so you know, all of you are Malay. Like, what percentage of do you think? What percentage of Singapore do you think is Malay? Mm. And they said forty percent. 
which mm. we know is a rather large overestimate yep. because yep. this is a different perspective. They, yep. you know, they, they are more spending more time in their own community. Yes. Then I had to correct them mm. on some of those, but they never felt comfortable being mm. vocal. Every debate match they went in thinking we are supposed to lose. Hmm. Because <laughs> we're not from a mainstream school. Yeah. We're not one of those elite yeah. um, SAP or independent schools. Yeah. We're the girls. Yeah. Boys are louder. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? yeah. um, we're not even funded right, the way that we are. We're just a small school. Mm. So we're supposed to lose. Right. Right. And I think... What is painful to hear? It's super painful. And I think that that's, um, in many ways, I was so happy that they were able to turn that mindset around. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't even bother too much with like the techniques of speaking and all mm. that. It was just, I should have brought you in. It was just like strengthening the mind. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, no, you can't. Who says you can't? Yeah. Right. I know a lot about debating and mm. if I'm saying you can speak. Yeah. Then trust me, you can speak. Mm. Yeah. Uh, they made the finals of the tournament that wow. year. Yeah. And then the whole kampong came down to support them, <laughs> which was fantastic. I wish more yeah. parents actually came and supported their kids during the CCA, watched them debate yeah. and all that. And that was amazing to see the whole school turn out and support them. Yeah, so made it to the finals. Some of them were saying that, oh, the coach must be helping them during the yeah. prepared cases and all that mm. because they made it to the knockout rounds. Mm. At that point, however, they had to prepare on their own mm. without me. So wow. they thought, okay, this school is going to get knocked out. Nope. Yeah. They won their quarters. They won their semis. And wow. then, yeah. Last one, ah, oh, you know, still wish they <laughs> took it, but I mean, they were expecting to lose every single match. Wow. Yeah, making the finals was beyond their wildest dreams. You can, wow. if you believe. It's like a Coach Carter movie, yeah. man. <laughs> like believing, believing people and giving them a voice. Right. So, yeah. Samuel, last thing, because sure. you you do debate. Mm. One thing that I'm always curious about is mm -hmm. what is a hack that I can use based on all the frameworks uh -huh. that you know about persuading people, negotiating, mm -hmm. and debate. What is one hack that we can just take away? And it's like we can change mm -hmm. uh, how we talk to uh, fellow coworkers, mm. maybe even boss or even spouse. You know, that's <laughs> one word: chat. Okay, so when we talk to other people we are more concerned about what we're going to say, the yes. words that we're going to put down on paper. Yeah. And as long as I put the correct words down and I frame this and you rehearse the speech yeah. and then you stand up on stage and then you just deliver and yeah. hope that you connect it with the people. Yeah. You don't know the audience, your speech will never be perfect because you don't know what to put in, yeah. what you will need to say to connect, etc. So this is when I realized MFA training as well, in a way they said, you know, mm. the formal negotiations where they say, oh, we demand that Singapore do this. Yeah. Singapore goes, nah, -uh. right, okay. <laughs> that, it's already in a way pretty much scripted. We know what we can yeah. offer, what we can't, you know, yeah. and uh, like, I can't say something that MHA has told us not to say, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll get into a lot of trouble if I start making promises on behalf of a different ministry. Mm. So, but if you want to get through to them, you need to chat with them, see their interests, see right. where they're coming from, find out things they can say off the record, right? right? And then you realize, oh, this is important to you. Mm. Then I can change my message entirely. Mm. But if you don't make that effort to chat, yeah. to figure out what matters to you, yeah. where you're from, how mm. do you see this whole thing, yeah. then you can forget, all right? You're basically hoping and praying that your message will resonate when there's right. such an easy way. So speakers will take the time to work the crowd before actually going up and speaking. Yeah, to connect. Uh, to connect. Um, sending out surveys at the very yeah. least to see, uh, you, let me know what you guys want to hear, etc. Yeah. It's important. Everybody sees speeches as a one-way street. Yeah. You're just supposed to stand there and deliver and then mm. the rest just listen. But they're often not heard and understood or appreciated yeah. because it never became a dialogue. Yeah, it's a one-way kind of dialogue, yeah. but you ensure that your message is going to be received just because you bother to chat. Yeah, chat. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's um. So you are. It's it's really the low barrier, mm. trying to disarm everyone, yeah. and trying to figure out what mm -hmm. is of importance to you, mm -hmm. and I can tailor my message after that. Yeah. So it's not about trying to win straight away, mm -hmm. but it's about the idea of empathy. Yeah. And a lot more efficient as well, don't you think? A lot think? more efficient, yeah. 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 So you got to tell, I thought they literally could, actually, I'm not interested in 80% of your speech. I just needed the last 20%. Yep, yep, yep. I was like, let's jump to bed, <laughs> you know, and all True. that. And they see you as a human being, yep. you know, someone who's willing to share something, yep. but not a, not like an alien on the speech, like, um, or like, oh, someone so scary yep, yep, yep. That, um, uh, that I can't possibly relate to this person. Yeah. True. Thank you, thank you. Oh, very welcome. Thank you so much for this, um, sharing your passion. Uh, 
everything looks like it's aligned, right? Your interests, your strengths, your mm-hmm. values in this endeavor that you're doing. And I really wish you all the best uh, for your future. Oh, thank you so much and all the best for your future. This is great. Thanks for having me on, man. Had a great time. Thanks, Emma.